Hey now, cats, we're back again this week on the Balls from Owen Show. And today we have a return guest, someone that if you watch this show or you know Balls, I uh, absolutely love talking to. You might know him from Poltergeist Night of the Chicken Dead and other various acting roles, but today he's here now as an upcoming and established author. I read his debut novel, The Mysterious Happenings of Two Morning View, and I gotta say, man, I was blown away at what an incredible blend of sci-fi, horror, and what it was like to be a teenager in Western Pennsylvania. Uh, he has since then put out two. Well, actually, I think you're working on the third part now, correct? I'm working on the, wait, can I, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm working on the third. The second one is out. The yes. second one is out. And I'm working on third. This will this will be a trilogy. Yeah, the part of the trilogy, I'd like to say. Oh, uh, well, that's good. Oh, I like that. Um, and then uh, it's what is the, the second part's the mysterious happenings on Hyde Avenue, the lair, correct? A layer to incubus. The layer of the incubus. And yeah. I know he's you're hard at work on the third one, right? Still? I am. I am. Yeah. I I just kind of started meddling with it. Mm. Yeah. So I'm about maybe three chapters in. Yeah. But you'll uh, know him as the man, the myth, and the motherfucking legend, Jason Yashannon. <laughs> Thank you for coming back, dude. Like I am so uh, excited for having me. I, I really appreciate it. I, I I love coming on, and hopefully, you know, some people will tune in, and they're not like this fucking guy again. Oh, God. <laughs> it's been a hot minute. Since I swear. Before. Can I swear? Well, fuck yeah, you can swear. Oh hell yeah! All right, this fucking moron's coming back. Again. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure nobody that's watching this is going to be saying that because. They're already enamored with you from all the other stuff you did. And I have to say, dude, I love your first fucking book, man. Like, oh, thank I, you. I, I actually, it's actually one of my favorite books I've read in years. And I'm not even just saying that because you're like, I love you. Your me on that? If we could pinky swear, would Seriously, you Seriously, fuck yeah, we can, dude. Like, I still can't, fuck, <laughs> I can't stop telling people about it. I really, really love it. It's such a quick and fun, easy read, too. Like, I mean, I'm not kind of a hard reader. Like I, I go real slow, but man, I tell you what, I got like obsessed with it. And I just blew through that shit and like no problem at all. So, so I, this is what I this is what I tell people when they're asking me about the book. Oh, oh I didn't. You know, actually, one of my best friends who who's in the book. Um, I changed I changed everyone's name, but he's in the oh, book. Was that, was that the dude that's Brandon? Hmm. Uh, well, yeah, okay. So, all right. So here, wait. Let me let me go back. So I, I was talking to someone who had read the first book and was working on the second one. And she didn't know, and, and, and so I'll tell this. Yeah, in Leslie, case you gotcha. Listen. She didn't know that everyone in the book was based on someone from my real life. So, so the books, I'll say books now because there's two, are a blend of fiction and nonfiction, right? So hmm. all the all the people, all the locations, all the the uh, you know the the references to the music and skateboarding and the pop culture 90s references all of those are taken from my sophomore year of high school 1996 right yeah. so those are all based on real things and the whole i guess impotence of the story of my parents who still to this day stay up crazy late and my dad's goofy wedding ring all true wow it's only, it's only until it goes down that supernatural road that okay i made i made that part up everything else is true everything. i was really hoping you'd say you made that part up <laughs> yeah i mean it'd be, <laughs> if you haven't read the book when you do read it i mean it'd be pretty cool if i hadn't made it up <laughs> but uh but um but yeah but so that part's made up but everything else is based off of uh my real life well i didn't know that, that that's, that's even more interesting so, so brandon is was was my best friend who lived across the street from me. And you're our... obviously Justin. So I mean, uh... I'm Justin. Brandon is is was my best friend growing up. Uh, his real name is Brendan. So mm. I just kind of tweaked his name a little bit. Just eat it. Gotcha. And he did stutter in real life too. Oh you know, no did... way! <laughs> stutter. Yes, that's that's part of why he stutters in the book. And then Leslie was based off of my first girlfriend. Well, technically, during the book, she's like, I hope. She becomes my girlfriend, which, um, when did we start dating? I, I think we did start dating my sophomore year, but so like freshman year and into sophomore year was kind of that like, oh, she doesn't like me or people are like, oh, dude, I think, or her real name's Laura, by the way. Oh, Laura likes you. No, whatever, man. She doesn't like me. She, you know, uh, but so in the book, it's like that, you know, we're, there's something there, but we haven't, we haven't established what it is yet. 
And so, um, and so that she's based off of, um, you know, my first, who eventually did become my girlfriend in high school. Um, and then the, the villains in it, sadly, I did make my family all the villains, but my brother, my sister, my mom and dad, but nah, they don't care. They don't care. Yeah. They don't care, right? <laughs> I mean, I, I'm probably getting a cart before the horse here, but that is one of my questions. I mean, how do, do they know about that? And how do they kind of feel about it? Are they just like, meh, you know, like, or is it like, really, dude? Like, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> so my dad actually hasn't read the book and I kind of don't want him to, but my mom <laughs> has. Um, and she seems, she's a little bit of a better sport maybe than she, than he is. So she, you know, she was okay with it. I mean, in the, I don't want to give too much away, but in the second book, I mean, she straights up kills someone. Oh wow! And she just got done reading the second book and she, I'll say, I will say this and I appreciate, have you read the second book yet? No, no, actually I was getting ready to start. And then I actually ended up having some uh, medical problems and I didn't get to it. Yet, That's more I, important. That's more I'm important. Actually, in all honesty, I think I read the first, I have your first one on my Kindle and I, and I okay. do, I do in fact enjoy that, but like, I don't think, I think I'm actually probably just going to get the physical. Cause like I realized about myself, I think I probably kind of maybe enjoy reading a physical book. More than there's nothing like holding that book. And like, I'm a comic nerd at heart. So like, it's kind of like, awkward, yeah, but like, I mean, I I read the first book between uh, my phone and my Kindle back and forth when I was at work and everywhere I went. And uh, I think the second one, I think I'm just going to get cozy and order an actual physical copy, which it's, it's we'll tell little... people how to do that later. So stick around. <laughs> it's a little longer. It is a little longer, but there's just something about holding that paperback. And yeah, man, I, I'm I'm an old head. Like I I like vinyl. I like looking at you know physical liner notes and lyrics, and I like hold. I like physical dvds and blu-rays and movies i like physical media like i mean i don't have a problem with digital media it's fine but like uh nothing ever really replaces that experience of like you said just having that you know that you, know, you like buy a cd and you take out the little well, yeah I don't, i'm a i'm a cd i'm a music snob dude i don't like CDs. all the lyrics yeah there's nothing. i like vinyl i don't like cds like oh, okay okay so yeah. I, I will so i'll say this though um and I say this to everybody, and and I think I can say this, um, because you mentioned the book being like really fun to yes. read, and like, um, and actually a lot of nostalgia too. I have to say, I mean, I'm a little older than you, but I mean, it's still a lot. I remember those times, and it was actually like a, a really cool uh, throwback, like to that. Wait, how? I'm 42 now. Old you? 47. <laughs> okay, so I right, take so a couple of years. I mean, all right, so. I, this is what I always say to people where they're like, oh, I, I didn't know. Like, oh, you, you're a writer? I, I didn't know. And this is what I always say to them. I say, look, you're not, and this is for anyone who's listening to this, who is thinking about, oh, should I buy this dude's book or whatever, you know, you're not going to finish it and be like, oh my God, we just discovered the next Hemingway of our <laughs> century or of our generation. That's not going to happen, okay? I, 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 the writing's not that prolific, right? But like you said, I hope people think it's a fun read. Yes. It's, I hope they think it's entertaining. Absolutely. And, and that it, maybe it takes them back to that time when, you know, they were in high school, if, if they grew up in the 90s, um, and they just remember those kind of like, I always say like sim simpler times, you know, but like, you know, one salad one, years, the good old days. One, one person did review it and said, you know, yes, it is a supernatural, like mystery thriller, but there's a love story. Yeah. Yeah. At the heart of it. Sure. Mm. Well, and I, and I, and I'm hoping that maybe that like, it brings someone back to like their first love or their first girlfriend. And like, Oh, I remember those days, you know, but that they have fun reading it again. They're not going to be like, Oh my God, J Shakespeare come back to life in the form of this guy. But I think, I think people will be like, I enjoyed that. That was fun. I could read that again. Allow me to make a point, illustrate a All point right. to you though, sir. I All mean, right. uh, I think, you know, when you're kind of reading something like that, I would champion fun and, and, and that kind of stuff over, you know Hemingway anyway I mean how how many times can you say that fun reading a Hemingway book uh okay. I can honestly tell people I had a great time reading Jason's book and I highly recommend it Hemingway man eh, not so much so I'm, <laughs> well, gonna say you, I'm, I'm gonna say you are better than Hemingway so that's hey, nice. although I'm known to have bad taste no offense but, uh, <laughs> so I, I will say this the um the first one I looking back on it 
I think I could have cut down a little bit on the swearing. Yeah, I mean, that's how people talk, though, and that's how people talked back then. So, I mean, if anything, it's probably an accurate representation of that time period. So, I mean, okay. so the, the second one, I will say, um, doesn't have as much swearing. I just felt I mean, like that doesn't make or break your book anyway. So, all right. Well, then that I appreciate that. So, then, so then, yeah. So, then the second one, um, and I don't know if, uh, I don't want to give too much away, but uh, for those of you know who haven't read it, I mean, You've read the first one, but not the second one. So the yeah, second one, picks up, it. it picks up on me, Leslie and Brandon. And uh, we're basically um, in hiding from my family, you know, trying to um, trying to figure out what we're going to do and how we're going to get uh, my dad's ring back. You know, the ring that does the, I don't want the cool things. <laughs> does, <laughs> yeah. away, so people who haven't read it, um, we're trying to, alert. You know, <laughs> you gotta stay hidden from them long enough to like formulate a plan to get the ring back to destroy it. Um, and, you know, wackiness ensues as we're, uh, you know, kind of hiding out. Um, I, I, I like the second one. I feel like it's a little stronger than the first one. Uh, personally. Oh. I'm really I, looking forward to it now. Then. Um, I think because look, and and people who don't know me, you know, I I set out always to I thought, and you know, people take you know our roads change and our path in life. My path was what I thought was going to be an actor, which it still could be. You know, you know, I mean, I know everyone's on strike right now, but um, you know, th that could always come back to me. But so I never really identified myself as like a writer, so. I want to say from the first book to the second book, I actually thought maybe my writing got even stronger and better. And I think I learned a lot from the first one going into the second one. Well, that's uh, actually and... leading me to my first question, dude. Uh, oh, okay. I wanted to ask you, what's the, what's one thing you learned from crafting your first novel that you incorporated into writing these next two? You know what? I think, I think looking back at the first one, I would sometimes use and I would sometimes use like the same phrasing or maybe the same adjectives maybe too many times. So I, in the second one, I really tried to be conscious of, okay, how can I say this so it doesn't sound like what I just said beforehand? You know what I mean? Like now a lot of the dialogue I was pulling from crap that I actually said back then, but I just tried to make sure that it didn't sound too repetitive, that I kind of changed up you know the the way i would describe something or the adjectives so that it just sounded a little a little more fresh and not like wait didn't he just say that like two sentences ago because i have a tendency in real life to ramble on and repeat myself so i wanted to make sure i was conscious of all right let's make sure that you know it sounds everything i'm not describing something the same way i just did hmm. and that i uh you know, making it sound different from the paragraph before using, you know, a different adjective, a different, you know, whatever the case may be. Um, did that answer your question? Was that your question? Yeah, yeah, that actually, that's spot on, sir. Uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> moving right along. Hey, what was your work schedule like when you were writing? Did it vary from book to book? I, <laughs> you mean my writing schedule or my or like when I would work on it. Yes. I would, I, and even with the third one now, basically, and this is what I kind of tell anyone who's ever like, ah, oh, I mean, I've always wanted to write something, you know, I, you know, it's so cool that you did that. I, and basically what I would say was like, like, look, I would write when spare minute, no matter when that was right. Even if it was like, you know what? Um, my, my, my daughter, we just put our daughter to sleep. I've got, 20 minutes before I need to start like whatever getting ready for bed or whatever the case may be I'm just gonna write for those 20 minutes or hey I'm not doing anything for these five minutes I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna reread what I wrote yesterday and see if it was any good and, and maybe I just change and maybe I just like delete what I wrote you know and, and then that's it for the day but every day I would try to sneak in every and every day every day I mean I try to sneak in a little something before this interview. I actually went back and read something that I wrote for the third part. And I was like, huh, eh, that actually was pretty, okay. I'm going to leave it. I'm, I'm I like what I wrote. 
Hmm. So I, you know, because I'm not really like, because no one was like, Jason, here's a million dollar advance for your next book. And you know what I mean? And I'm not like, cool. I just have all this time to write because I got this advance from my publisher. You know, I'm kind of doing this on my own and self publishing. So I don't really have a schedule to do it. I just fit it in when I can. And I try to do something every day. Perfect. Yeah. What would you say is your most interesting writing quirk? Do you have one? My most interesting writing quirk. Um, I, I don't know if I'd call it a quirk, but people have said that the dialogue sounds very authentic, hmm. that it sounds like, okay, I was, ex- I was in high school with you. Yeah. And, and I so that. I would think, I would think maybe my, my one thing is, I feel like my dialogue rings pretty true and it sounds like, holy shit, I, this guy could have been my best friend in high school. Like it does come across as that. That's actually one of the strengths I think I like about it. Um, I would say maybe that's, I, I don't know if I'd call it a quirk, but I would say maybe that's one of my, okay, I'll call it a strength. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I think, I think I can make the dialogue sound pretty believable and authentic. And it, and it is because it is based off of, you know, real life. But um, I think it just gives a, the person a sense of like, Oh yeah. Yeah, totally. Like I, I, I remember that show or that movie or man, yeah. I, I've been at the lunch table with this guy, you know, like. Yeah. self admittedly being a film nerd and a music nerd, I loved your references to all that stuff. It really, it did, it did tickle me a lot. So I mean, I'm probably doing too many Ghostbuster ones, but it was my you favorite. You never movie. do too yeah. many Ghostbuster ones. Okay, because, <laughs> because the third one literally in like the first like paragraph, I, mentioned something about ghostbusters again dude i'm i'm a i'm a huge ghostbusters fan and every time it happened i was like eek a little bit inside (laughs) okay so yeah let let me ask you that i was wondering as i was reading uh did you have this entire story in mind originally as a trilogy or did you get inspiration along the way and and it fleshed out as a whole story from the first one that's a good question i i always had two books in mind okay Mm -hmm. two and in my in my mind, I was going to end it at the second one, okay? Mm-hmm. And I was going to end it uh, in not a very great way and, and leave it in a very dark place, right? I, I let my sister read the second one when I was still working on it. And she inspired me and convinced me to do one more to make it a trilogy. She was like, you can't, you can't leave it like that. You can't, you can't end it that way. Hmm. She was like, if you end it that way, I'd be really, really angry. And I think a lot of your readers might be angry, Hmm. especially if they identify with, you know, the young love story. Um, And maybe they do, maybe they don't. I don't really know. But she, she said she would be kind of angry because she identified with that because oddly enough, she was in high school with me and I met my girlfriend kind of through my sister. (laughs) So maybe she just was a little closer to the story than other people, but more emotionally uh, invested. She was in. Yeah. Yeah. But um, she convinced me to be like, no, you can't end it there. This is this. She said, in my mind, this is a hero's story, even though Justin is kind of an unconventional kind of hero. He's still the hero of the story. And you, I think you'd anger a lot of people if you left it the way I was planning on in the second book. Hmm. So to answer your question, I always thought it was just going to be two books, Hmm. but, but she did convince me to go one more. And actually now that I'm working on the third one, I think she made the right decision. Yeah. 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 I, I think, I think she helped me make the right decision to keep it going for one more, but I will say this because now this is a pet peeve of mine. I don't love when things keep going and going and going. So I promise it will end at the third book will be the final one. I won't keep drag. Not, I don't want to say dragging it on, but it'll end at the third one. Wait, but I mean, you'll still continue to write different stories, correct? Yes. Yes. I think I still will, but this particular journey, this particular story, story, is, story and arc is done. 
I think three, and kill the Netflix movie. That is the ultimate goal. Anyone listening out there who has some pull at Netflix or Hulu or one of those streaming places, that's the goal. Well, I'm actually not even joking, man, because like I actually you can actually picture it pretty vividly in your head. And I'm thinking, man, this would adapt the screen like really, really well. So, I mean, I don't know anybody listening. uh, Do yourself a a service and and definitely adapt this book. I, I, I don't know anything about screen screen credit. Now, I, I have, I haven't, I haven't taken them up on that offer yet. I, I did say, well, that is the goal down the line. Um, but I want to finish it first. Like mm-hmm. I want to finish. Although maybe, maybe it doesn't. Maybe you don't need to do that. Maybe you can write the screenplay of for the first one while uh, you're still working on the whole thing. I don't know. Mm. Can you? I, I would, I, I would assume you could. I guess. I mean, as long as you have. A beginning, a middle, and an end, I would assume. I, I assume there's no rules, right? Like, you can... Yeah, I don't think there's a book of, you know, a big book of, uh, you know, screenplay do's and don'ts. I mean, uh, hey, man, I mean, you're the perfect person to do it. So, I mean, uh, you got it all up here, so I don't see why you couldn't. So That's true. That's true. I wonder if it would get a little confusing, like, if you are writing the screenplay. Yeah, I think if you were doing a book at the same time, it could really <laughs> kind of wait, get wait, you wait, off the rails. For the third book. I think it could probably be counterproductive to your story, maybe. So, maybe. Yeah, you know, maybe, but... Maybe. That is, you know, that's like, that is a goal of mine. I'm going to put it out there in the universe and maybe you could put it out there as well. Um, I, I can't agree more, sir. I it was, like I said, I was just re- was reading it. I was picturing it and I think uh, that would be an incredible, I was like, wow, I'd love to see this as a movie. Like, uh, seriously. So, yeah, I think it could be split up. If it's three books, it could be split up into like. Or even know. a series, you know. Yeah, yeah. Like a mini series. Hey, I would take it. I would I would definitely be into that. I would love to I would love to be uh to sit in on the casting too. Who would play Justin? Hmm. Who would play Leslie? Hmm, that's a good question. I don't know. I don't know. She has to I mean Laura, the the girl who it's based on was uh, is Italian. Mm-hmm. So she'd have to have a little bit of a darker complexion and darker hair. Uh I mean, I look like your typical skater nerd you know i had glasses i had i mean i know my hair is spiky now but it was like you know mouth brown and kind of i don't know i don't know it'd be interesting to i always hey, think well, we should fun. think on that and we'll come up with a list and then uh yeah when yeah. you come back to talk about your third book we'll talk about that all yeah right. all right all right so yeah let me let me ask you i want to get the, i want to get a i want to get these in before uh we have to close here uh what was the what was one of the most surprising things you learned while writing these books did you learn anything about yourself i mean i don't oh this is gonna come up this is gonna sound braggy i don't want it to sound braggy oh I brag a little you deserve it mm. this guy's a dick he's such a like a pompous asshole Dude, but, nobody, nobody ever gets that impression from you i'm telling you uh, uh, well uh well then i will say that i because again i i i wasn't aware that I would take this journey in life, right? In my mind, I always thought again, like, oh no, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be an actor, right? That's that's like what I do. Um, and when I started to write, um, I think maybe something that I did learn about myself is that you know what, even though I was a sh- student, okay, I sucked at English, you know, I I'm horrible at math. I I learned that, you know what, I I think I'm a pretty decent storyteller. Hmm. I, you know, I think like, even though, and I'll tell this to people, anyone listening who's thought about like, oh, I've always wanted to write something. And, uh, you know, I, I just don't let yourself get in your own way. Right. That's like, don't, don't be your own worst enemy. Don't let your mind talk you out of it. Like, well, I don't know how to write, or I don't, you know, I, I, I didn't know how to write either. Like, again, I think I've, I didn't even know the difference between um, T-H-E-N and T-H-A-N, right. Then and then. I didn't even know the difference between those two when I first started, but I said, well, that's what an editor's for. I don't give a shit. They can, they can tell me the difference and they can fix it. Um, So I think I learned that like, even though I, again, didn't know all the rules of grammar, I I, I think I craft an an entertaining story without really having any like, you know, you know, prior knowledge on the, English grammar <laughs> or the English grammar rules. 
Well, now in your opinion, in your personal opinion, what do you feel makes a good story? I, I mean, for me personally, you know, I, and I and I hated reading growing up, right? The only reading I would ever do was Goosebumps mm. books, right? That's the only way my mom could get me to read. But um, I mean, I... I personally feel like, you know, if you're going to read something, it's, it's got to be entertaining, right? Like that, yeah, absolutely. that's like the, isn't that the purpose of like sitting down and like reading something like it should be able to take you away from whatever you're worried about and whatever your troubles are for that day it should be able to like, you know, give you that escape. So, I mean, I think that, I think that's probably the most important thing like does a book provide you with that escape or while you're reading are you just like oh shit i still have got x y and z to accomplish you know it's more like so, a job when it's not entertaining exactly yeah but that's hey that's just me that's just me was it easier writing your second and third book as opposed to the first one i think this i think the second mm, you know what, actually, the, as the story is going along and it's getting a little more involved, I think it's I think the first one was maybe, you know, the easiest in the sense that, like, OK, we have this one thing that's that that we're the, the story's built around. But now in the second one, it's taking all these different little twists and turns and the it's even uh, a little deeper than we were in the second one. So I, I actually think they've come become progressively harder as we've been going along. There's more characters. Um, you'll see in the second one, we, you know, there's a detective character. There's a, there's a kind of a wacky neighbor who comes into play. There's a, uh, you'll see, you'll see. Um, so I actually think that um, it's gotten a little harder as we go along because uh just the stakes are a little higher too. Cool. And there's, there's definitely more people involved. And uh, yeah, I don't know if that's, I wonder like if I could sit Tolkien down or JK Rowling down and be like, okay, so was it harder as you went along? I wonder if they would both agree that like, well, yeah, because I mean, think about the first Harry Potter book, like yay big. And then the last one was like, you know, like, you know what I mean? Like, so you're pretty much building a mythos. So that would probably seem, it does seem like it'd be more difficult. So. And, and you know, like the, um, there's, uh, well, I don't want to give too much away, but you know, there's the different world, mm -hmm. you know, but you know, uh, which is growing and different characters involved in, in that different world. So uh, yeah, I think it's, I think this, the second one was definitely harder and the third one, like only three chapters in, but it's definitely like, it's, it's definitely seems to be a little bit more challenging, especially because like in the third one, it's kind of like, boom, we're just going. So it's like, like we start and you're like, you, you've seen the Night of the Living Dead where it's like, it's the one with Bill Moseley in it. You've, have you seen that one? 90s remake, the Savini remake, yes. Mm. I love that one. That's my favorite one. You, you remember how it just kind of like, boom, boom it starts, it's right? There. Yes. That's what I based the third one off of. Hmm, In that. the sense that it's just like, we just go. And and actually the first scene takes place in a cemetery, which is oh, where, sweet. which is where that, which is where that one takes, you know, they drive to the mom's grave and all hell breaks loose, right? Little known fun fact, that's where ex Tina and I got married, uh, in the Evans City Cemetery. Mm. In that cemetery? Yes, sir. What? Oh, yeah. I'll send you pictures. <laughs> oh, that's, that's amazing. Did you do it because of that? Of course. <laughs> All right, yeah. If you oh. look uh, right up here, too, there's a Night of the Living Dead frame. I saw it, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I had a feeling you might uh, you might relate to what I was saying. Absolutely. So you, that like, makes it all the more cooler, dude. I only have a few minutes left. Uh, I just wanted to ask you one more thing. If you could get in a time machine now and go back and tell yourself some key advice about writing, what would you tell yourself? Oh. Um, <laughs> well, I would... I, I would probably... I, I thought about this before. Um, I would probably go back, okay, and maybe pay a little more attention in English class. That's true. Maybe, 
Maybe you learned the difference between T-O and T-O-O. <laughs> <laughs> but but honestly, I'd probably go back. This 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 might sound a little weird, but I'd probably go back and um tell myself, okay, without going into too many specifics, I uh I did this really bad vandalism thing once when I was in eighth grade. Mm-hmm. Okay, it kind of messed me up a little bit and kind of put me on a, a path that I wasn't expecting, I'd probably go back and be like, okay, don't do that. Don't do that vandalism thing and pay better attention in English class. Hmm. Um, and, and I, and I, and, and I don't want to say what it was because, you know, I, you know, it was, it was bad, but um, it, sh- you're a different man now. You don't have to, yeah, maybe, maybe it's we all and change. We've all done dumb shit. That, that right? Everyone has that. So maybe I'm all of, <laughs> maybe I would go back and like, don't do that. Pay better attention in English class. You still always and will always suck at math. So don't worry about math class. <laughs> Same. <laughs> but yeah. Um, and and I don't know. And actually, I would maybe tell myself also to, you know, don't get in your own head, which is something that I really had to like drive that point home when I first started the first book. Don't listen like, you know, you know how you talk yourself out of things all the time. Like, Oh, I'm not smart enough or talented enough or blah, blah, blah. No, I can definitely relate to that for sure. All that aside and just, and just keep, keep forging ahead, keep doing it. And as long as you're having fun doing it for me, it was more of like a, it was, it was a, it started out as more of like a, a therapy for me because at the time I started writing the first book, I was very depressed because I wasn't getting any acting work. Mm -hmm. and so um i was seeing a therapist and he basically presented me with the challenge of like well look if you're telling me you're a creative individual and no one is answering your acting door that you're knocking on but you have to do something you have to figure out what that is or else you're just gonna tailspin and so that's when i said okay you know what i i think i've got this interesting idea for a story I'm just going to do it. And and I don't care if I don't know all the rules. I'm just going to go for it. I well, kind of uh, went on a different tangent there. But basically, I would tell myself to just don't 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 be afraid to just jump in. Just do it. You know what? And and if it sucks, you know what? It doesn't matter because if it, if it's making you happy and it's helping you. For me, it was helping me like get out of this dark place I was in, then, then that's all, then that's, then it's worth it. And that's all that matters. Well, I would like to thank that therapist because uh, without that guidance, we wouldn't have these books. And speaking of books, go to Amazon, go to any place where books are sold online or, uh, you know, in stores, to, uh, run out. Barnesandnoble.com now too. There you go. Barnesandnoble.com. Run out, get Jason's book and books. And I, I guarantee you cats, you won't be dissatisfied. Like I said, I'm a hard reader. I loved it. Looking forward to the second one and the third one. Make sure you get them. Thank you so much for coming back to the show, sir. You're welcome. Can I, can I say one more thing? Yes. 16th and 17th, I'll be in Columbia, South Carolina for SC Horror Convention. Make sure you go and see him. The man, the myth, the motherfucking legend, Jason Nishin. And okay. Thank you, Kat. Thank you for coming back. You know I love you, homie. Peace, and love. Peace and love.